Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the rundown. I we are both very frustrated. I'm very frustrated. Brian's just laughing at my suffering. We did a we got what 15 minutes in, and then my fucking fucking power on my end cut out, and I lost the whole ass recording. R.I.P. We totally have only done this once so far. <laughs> this is our first time. <laughs> yeah. Welcome back to the rundown, everybody. So. Uh, we're gonna go over the two things we talked about beforehand, probably a little brief, like over a little faster this time because we practiced so far, far and so forth. Starting with yeah, the, our thoughts are honed. Yeah, starting with starting with the uh, uh, there's a Shrek, they're making a Shrek five. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. So Shrek one, one of the greatest animated animated movies of all time. Shrek two did what very few sequels are able to do and be better than the original. Uh, and then you had Strike 3, which while it wasn't, it, while it is, while it didn't live up to the, like, the, while it didn't eclipse the second, like the second and the first, it was an excellent movie, well written, well voice acted, and it was, I think, a, 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 a on par with the first movie and a great send off to the series. And then, and then because sequel bait demands mu sequel bait, you have Shrek Forever After. Which, Didn't know this existed. Yeah, yeah, it's just timey-wimey bullshit being based off of, like, you know, Shrek. I'm gonna just drop spoilers because it's been out, this movie has been out for, like, over a decade, so shut the fuck up. Um, it's, it, it, it's essentially just, you know, Shrek, Rumpelstiltskin wants to rule the fucking world. Shrek's birth, Shrek, he prevent, he sh like Shrek is having a midlife crisis because he is, he's married with three, with three, with triplets and fuck, and like he, his day is like boring because it's been on here, but he wants like, he's having a midlife crisis and wants to be like a real over again. And basically Rumpelstiltskin, like he wants, he makes it so everybody forgets him, like his, in his fame and shit, he's like one of the most famous people in the fucking world because like he was, he's like, you know, the in-laws for like, kings and shit and then he found the lost a lost king or whatever in the third movie and uh you know yeah it's basically and it's all and it's and instead of and like the basically the entire movie is, is like stemming from this midlife crisis like timey-wimey multiverse bullshit where like the world is like warped he was Bob Stolskin basically was never born and like Fiona is now leading a rebellion of ogres and shit it's it just it's not a great it's not and <coughs> excuse me we're kind of eh on shrek 5 maybe it'll be good but i don't I, know because here's the thing right like i think one of the issues with shrek 4 ultimately was that in all of the movies up until that point, there was an undercurrent of like relatability, like stages in life. You know, being alone, being a bachelor, kind of not enjoying necessarily being alone, but like accept, have, having accepted it and then finding someone who loves you, matches your freak, and like, you know, finding someone you love. And like, and that's a very relatable experience. That's a very human experience. The second is, you know, meeting the in laws meaning being in a environment that class-wise you're not familiar with and like the uncomfortabilities of being in like you know being like a poor working class person now you're in like high society and shit and that's involved. like that's very relatable um and, and you know wanting your in-laws to like you wanting to like do everything to like be more acceptable to your partner because you see them because like they're kind of out of your league that's a very you know human trait in understanding have the third movie like the fear of being becoming a parent and the uh, and becoming a father and like being worried like like are you going to repeat the mistakes of the past are you going to be a good parent like are you worried you're gonna like those are very human worries and, and you know you know daddy issues is another undercurrent there and Evan, like that. are you trying to tell me that time travel and reversing people's births aren't an everyday human experience? Well, I think, well, my thing is, is that all of these things <laughs> that I, I've, I've, I've talked about, like, these were happening parallel to the plot. 
No, know? I know. Like this were hap- there was a, there was an overarching plot that was happening. Like this was like the, like like these aspects were the B plot. These were the B mm-hmm. plot. The B plot, you know, in that sense. Like yes, you know, Shrek and stuff were fuck around with fairy godmother trying to get like look handsome and shit. But like ultimately, that was not the main plot of what was going on in the story per se. At least that that's what I felt. Like the main plot was like fairy godmother, the adversary was trying to fucking you know get rid of Shrek and the Nate enforce marriage with Prince Charming. That's the second movie, you know. I haven't seen these movies in so long. I'm not gonna and, lie to you. And, that's why I'm not contributing yeah, much. <laughs> you're good. And the first movie was about, um, you know, Shrek getting, you know, the uh, mismanagable creatures out of his fucking swamp. That was the that was the primary uh, story. For, but the, the problem is, is, is that like the B plot was the catalyst for what was the what became the A plot for the A plot in Shrek Four, which I think is another thing that kind of makes it feel not as good because his because like basically for the entirety of Shrek Forever After, like his midlife crisis shit has like a montage at the beginning and then it's like barely kind of like touched upon for the rest of the movie. It's um. It's really not a uh, a thing, you know. It's like yeah, know, it's not like that mid like crisis of just like I'm, I'm like I I I I don't feel like there's any variety in my life. Like I'm happy. I love like what I am, but I want I, I want to just feel I, I'm nostalgic for a past that I'm forgetting I was miserable with. You know mm-hmm. that like that like that through line is not there throughout the entire movie, which. You know, it's a big reason why I think even with all the time you want to be bullshit, it suffers. So, like I said, Thanks, not a lot of hope, if any at all, for Shrek. Fun. Yeah, depending on who the writers are, <clears throat> maybe it'll be good, but uh, not too, not too sure. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, let me. I have to go look the dog up. Give me one second. I have, I have kidnapped a child to bring with me. For those and listening. there's a kitty. He's still, yeah, your cat's still in the cone of shame, I see. Yep. He has been in there for months. A oh, poor kitten. <laughs> He's like, Father, you really? have disgraced us. <laughs> He's a kiwi. But yeah, that was the Shrek stuff. Um, moving on to the other part that we lost is uh, Ryan. Have you ever heard of a guy have the sketch controversy that happened? Man, do I want to go to sleep? <laughs> no, <laughs> I haven't heard it. Of, I didn't hear about it before we started talking about it. Then the power went out. So, long story short. And I'm not explaining the whole story. I'm just saying from my perspective. Uh, this controversy doesn't really make sense. Nobody's really being hurt so far. Milkshake duck situation is always there. If you don't know what that is, look it up. Uh, you looking it up? Yeah. Long story short, milkshake duck is in internet culture a milkshake duck is a person who gains popularity on social media for some positive or charming trait but is later revealed to have a distasteful history or to engage in investment offensive behavior jesus so Mm -hmm. all right but um basically so basically in a nutshell um the sketch situation here can be best described as um people right, flipping so, over nothing yeah so so just so for those who are unaware of sketch here is a uh clip reel of some of uh some funny folks uh like here's a clip reel of sketch and some just some funny bits of okay, his so. one for 15 that's what i would probably I just think one for fifteen is horrible. No, one for fifteen. That's what I would have probably graded your haircut after you got it. But you know, <laughs> that's between you and the lady at Great Clips. Great lady. <laughs> First off, it's big lead haircut. The lady. Sure. <laughs> How long did it take? Like twenty seconds. Okay. Oh How long did it take? Twenty really seconds. Okay. You know, give me a weed whacker. I can do the same shit. 
What I get, what I like to do is when I go use the restroom, what I have to do is, cold, is cold, I bro. parlay it with taking a shower. So I never really have to wipe my ass. I just oh get in the shower. <laughs> Fun fact: Jinxie's haircut came with a tap out shirt. <laughs> <laughs> dude, if he did stand up, he dude, would kill it. He would crush. When did you realize you were like, shit, I got motion, twin? Says burp. Says burp. Says burp. <laughs> you see my release off the line. It is a phenomenal route. Yes. Yes. He's, he's, he's goofy. He's funny as shit. So, yeah. Um, so basically, just to get you caught up before we look at this fucking apology video, um, Sketch, uh, had, so was apparently a model in somebody's OnlyFans page, a gay OnlyFans page, um, and, uh, I remember hearing about the Sketch allegations, Sketch controversy, all that, I'm like, oh, I can't believe Sketch did that, all in the fucking comments of, like, TikTok and shit, I'm like, who the fuck is Sketch and what did he do? And I just Googled Sketch. And I and this was the video, the TikTok I just showed you was the video that popped up, like a compilation of like all the funny shit he had like. He said, I'm like, oh, this guy's fucking great. He's funny as shit. And I'm like, what the fuck did he do? And then I went, went on Google directly and looked at, uh, not on Google, on TikTok. And I and like, like fucking, I saw like a few different streamers who he's associated with, like Queso, Kaisin, and Jinxie, like comment on it on their streams. I'm like, they're like, yeah, who gives a shit? And they went in, in like, at, at the at ultimately, like, you know, the gaming, the gaming sphere, like, should be one of the least right wing spaces on the internet because, like, so many games just like have, the undercurrent of them is like freedom, anti authoritarian, yeah, like, anti, like, 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 <laughs> just like, and, and like the. Plots of games are like freedom, anti-authoritarian. Don't be a dick. Treat like free, like freedom for the oppressed. All that shit. Like these are the undercurrents. And then you have like, and then you have the Call of Duty community. Not even the Call of Duty community. I would no, say like I, that, that. That's just that's the that's just the uh, community that I like throw out. Like when I'm like, oh, you here's the racist homophobes. Now I'm not now now granted. No, not everybody like, not everybody that plays Call of Duty is really racist homophobic. But like one of the biggest creators in that space, Nick Merckx, like he oh, equates fucking life. he fucking equates uh homosexuality with child predation. So you know, yeah. once, once you're at that once you've drunk the Kool-Aid to that level and you're one of the biggest creators in that space, like come on, dude. But I digress. I also saw a lot of people comparing Sketch in this case to Doctor Disrespect, which I think like is absurd. Because... Yeah, not even close. Because <laughs> so, like, like it's funny because like a lot of the people who I see going after Sketch for doing gay for bottoming and gay porn is uh, are uh, were kind of hand wavy on the Doctor Disrespect allegations. I'm like, that's, it's not that's insane. It that is, is not at no that at no dry drop. Yeah, it this shit is not like this shit is not about fucking um you know protecting the children. Otherwise, y'all would have wanted like Doctor Disrespect to be buried under a fucking prison. No, it's about hating gay people. That's all. It's about. But moving on, uh, this is his full apology. We're going to watch a good chunk of it, I, I think, uh, and then I think we'll move on. Just this because I want to bring this up because like a he shouldn't have to apologize for the sex work before of course this is a sex work positive channel and two um this is like a masterclass example on like PR management this man hopped on a live stream this was a live stream originally and uh did this for baby God damn where were y'all before fuck. Elephant in the room, I got a haircut. That's funny as shit. <laughs> Just a great beginning. Wasn't planning on doing this today, but I guess so. Okay, I'll start from the top. Look at this, open and honest. That was me. That was me. It's okay, though. I will tell you what. Okay. 
two years ago I did some stuff. I'm sorry if you've seen some of the stuff. You know I'm a changed person. Um, this is going worse than I thought it was. Um, so two years ago, I did not have sexual relations with that man. I'm just kidding. I did. Possibly. <sighs> Catch out of the bag. Fun fact, that little clip there, I did not have sexual relations with that man. I, I, actually, I, actually did. I did. did. Possibly. That's how that, like that that snippet that's turned into a whole ass tic, like TikTok sound. Oh yeah, I bet. I bet that's all awesome. It's okay. Um what else do I have to say? I don't know. Thank you to all my people that have been sticking up for me. I understand if you're bad. Shit hit the fan. I don't, don't go on Twitter. I, I deleted. No, I'm just kidding. I didn't delete Twitter. I have been. Yeah, yeah. Twitter's pledge we get the Reichstag at, at present, and they're not. They, they were kind of lighting him up over there, if I'm being honest. I believe it. They're all Elon Musk fanboys, so makes sense. <laughs> I just, as far as like Twitter's concerned, I like. I, I, do, I don't really use Twitter too much. I. I engage more on threads just because like the, they have an algorithm and that kind of helps and preferably I like blue sky I like blue sky a lot cautiously Over. avoiding it it's like fucking landmines everywhere I go okay I was dealing with some addiction problems a couple of them but no excuse there uh wait I guess just trying to give you some background background here. What else was I going to say? Yeah, that was me. Um, I fucked up. I won't do it again. Kind of the gist of it. Pretty it much. Yeah, the situation shouldn't even be talked about. The f again, the fact that it's even being compared to the do Dr. Disrespect situation is it, absolute brain rot insanity. It, Just it, calling it out right there. It is, it, it is, um, pa it's, pa it's patently absurd, ultimately, because, like, let's, let's be so fucking for real. Um, like, let's be so fucking for real, right? Like, it's, it's. The people's issue with this is, is that if, if he if he had if he had, if, like if he had gotten you know if he, if he was like fucking a woman or whatever in that in that clip he it would it been wouldn't issue. have been one tenth one it tenth of the controversy none it like, would have been like oh or uh, she ugly <laughs> literally yeah it's 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 literally just because they're gay. he's gay like it's like the most manly man and here's the thing I want to remind everybody. If you have ever watched porn, the men, those like, like vaguely, like those, like the, the men in those, in those that you're watching, blast the back out of like a woman you find attractive. All of those men have either have either given it or taken it in gay porn because being a porn it's, star pays like pays shit. So much better. And the pay is so much fucking better. So like yeah. So you know, at the end of the day, it's the sex work. It, sex work, the sex industry is it's incredibly exploitative and harmful, but sex workers are not. Like just, that's just the distinction. So, also you did met, and we were talking. We did did a whole tangent about like how like sex work is good and stuff. And you had a friend, a friend of yours from high school, who actually has an OnlyFans. If you wanted to shout her out again, just out of respect, yeah, yeah, because uh... we lost that originally. My friend Nikki LaFay, if you guys would like to check that out, just supporting the homegirl, you know, for a bag haul. That's all. Yeah. Last thing I want to show. It's not show, like he made that content, but. Last thing I want to show on this is what is, I think, Phil DeFranco kind of like did a perfect example here. Um, Philly D, Let's Phil DeFranco show. 20 seconds, and then we're going to move on to the next topic.
It's not like he made that content, but he's known for saying that like gay people shouldn't have rights. And I'm personally of the mindset of yeah, that's the other big thing. He's not a, he's not like one of those like gay pastors that you know rails and sermons against gay people and brimstone and fire all the shit and then six months after. loud in the streets but gay in the sheets <laughs> basically anyone that attacked yeah i think just the worst fucking thing about this is, is that sketch got like outed without his consent like that's yeah. kind of like the hard part i think for, i think that's like the hard like the thing that like pisses me off like obviously like he was probably scared of coming out because of like he wasn't sure how his fucking community. He's a fucking Madden Street dog. Like, like, who the, like but that's... I will say, as fucked up as this is, not that it should be expected, but people who do online adult content, at least, I don't know about him because it was a one time thing. It was a guest appearance. It he, wasn't he, his own he, page. He, he, that he whole also thing. said, he also said that, by the way, that like he said that mm. he, he was like having suicidal thoughts and stuff on the lead up to this. Like, that was something nah, he said that... in that video. And like this was, is so fucked up but if, if he I, didn't get the support that he got from his friends and community and i want to say there are tons of private people who from an angry customer or from a angry person who didn't want to spend money whatever the case may be an ex-boyfriend who, who whatever will spread that information and share that content to family members younger siblings parents the whole nine yards so it's just a fucked up thing all around that whole adult content space has a horrible um what's it called like horrible problem in terms of how exposed they are like it's so sad honestly and this is just another example of that yeah absolutely him over this they can go fuck themselves whether it be joe blow bigoted barry to fucking tyree kill he tweeted oh sketch done played y'all tyreek if i was you i'd watch myself you're fast but you're not faster than a google search you fucking woman beater emotion no damn it it's not like he yeah damn. yeah fucking love philip defranco man uh <laughs> I will also say, did you ever see the guy on TikTok or Instagram who's black but says nigga really weird? You know who I'm talking about? I haven't the faintest idea who you're talking about. Well, anyway, that's his whole gimmick. People get mad at him because they're like, you're black, but it sounds like you're a white person saying it. Please stop. And he's like, I'm one of you. Please, please understand. And then he just says it in the most like white way possible. Like if you said it, Evan. And then uh, somebody came out and did some research on him. And it turned out that he was a little bit of a pedo. And uh, yeah, the internet has not been favorable as they shouldn't be so good for them yeah. uh, we talked about good the doctor the disrespect internet. shit didn't we last week uh yeah yeah we did yeah cool another piece of shit letting that shit go on for four years five years playing fucking playing fucking dumb uh very quickly evan i wanted to talk about the uh I believe it's over. Yeah, it's the 12th. It's one day over. But I did purchase some games off of the Steam Summer Sale. Did you oh, yourself purchase anything, man? I have no money. I am very poor. If you want to, if, if you want to help with that, you can go to himedia.gg slash tip. Uh, one dollar a month is a boon to my mental health please i'm very poor you get exclusive you get early access to things like the rundown as well as exclusive videos and things and other perks uh supplemented through our discord please i am very poor give me your money <laughs> but yes continue yeah pay the boy please he's the homie he needs it he's not just bullshitting y'all um i just wanted to say though that i got a few quite a few games uh, during the sale, I got Stellaris, if nice. you know what that is. Uh, um, vaguely. do you know what that is? So uh, it's a paradox, uh, open world, not open world, but like real time strategy game. But in the universe, you could get mods that make it like a Star Wars RTS, like upgraded version of the uh, garrison mode in Battlefront, something like that. Uh, and uh, it's a really cool game. Prison Architect I got. 
you know, just a cool little game. Picked that up for three bucks, which was crazy. Have a Nice Death, which is, I believe, a roguelike. Uh, what's it called? You die, you attack, uh, platformer, almost like Cold of the Lamb, uh, Hades, things of that nature. Uh, but it had like a cool little gimmick where you play this little Grim Reaper fellow and it kind of caught my eye and it was on sale for 15 bucks. It's usually like 25, 30. I was like, fuck it. I might as well pick it up. I also got Bloons Tower Defense 6. That's it's a, a good game one. For my, yeah, it's a game from my childhood. I, I got believe that it was, I think it was like four or five, six bucks. So I was like, fuck it. I got to pick it up. And then for crazy. When, when you I, open, when you open that up, they, the, 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 purchase version on steam has a lot of shit that the the flash versions never had no i bet and uh i think you'll jump out of your seat for this both sid meyer's civilization seven uh six i was about to say seven seven just got uh, announced six and uh what's it called uh left for dead one and two all for under like five bucks which is just insanity. Then I did also buy Xenoverse because Sparkling Zero. I need a. I need to get some practice in. <laughs> How's Baldur's Gate Three? Uh, I haven't touched it because I've been waiting for Noelia and Ellen. Why? We're doing a joint fucking run. I'm just gonna start a new campaign, but I'm also not on my computer that much. I won't lie. Yeah, you know, have you ever thought about, um, you know, have you ever, uh, thought about, like, just getting a big-ass, um, HDMI cord, sticking No, I have one, and it sticks in my TV. My whole caveat, right, is whenever it's my night on the TV, we, the way we go is me, me my girlfriend, and my roommate have two uh, separate schedule uh you know block scheduling or whatever you want to call it yeah i get two days they share two days because they usually watch the same thing or they won't like and if, you know and, and and if the and if there is and if there is for whatever a rarity where like where either your girlfriend or ellen want to watch something themselves you'll usually sacrifice a day just out of like respect just so they yeah i got it yeah i got you All right uh what's it called whenever it is my day on the tv i usually play the ps5 not that i don't want to play the uh you know pc i just have so many games on the goddamn ps5 right now that i need to get into why don't you play uh why don't you play on your pc while they're playing on the um why don't you play on your pc while they're having their day then so there lies the other problem since ellen has been working so much it's been mainly me and Noelia watching TV together. So whenever we watch, whenever it's her night, she usually is watching something that she wants me to watch. So then there's no more me being on my PC or PlayStation 4. I got to watch what she wants to watch, which, hey, don't get me wrong. I love the shit that she's been suggesting and putting on. I'm watching Atlanta right now. I literally just started it. Donald Glover, obviously, it's great. I just never got into it. Uh, but yeah, great stuff. I'm just like, what do I do? <laughs> and then since I've been working as well, time has also been a little limited. Not too much, though. So, But yeah, I just wanted to shout out a few of those games. Everything was on fucking sale, man. Like, everything. It was crazy. Yeah, it's. I wish I had money. I wish I had a job. I would have. I would have bought a ton of shit. No, I know. I know, my boy. So, but mostly, I, so continue. I'm sorry. No, you go ahead. You, I cut you off. I, I was just gonna say. Also, I bet you didn't know. I know you're gonna bring up a, a separate story, but I just wanted to say one second. Bet you didn't know that like ninety percent of the player base from of uh, uh, what is it? Hell Divers Two is like gone. And it's not really anything bad. It just had a it's really just, big it, blow up. It just yeah, it just finally it dropped off. Well, no, it's just like it's like the people that are that enjoy playing it are still playing it. Like they No, no, no. I just mean the hype over it is has fizzled cuz you don't yeah. see as many videos about it. You don't see as much marketing. Not that it's bad, not that they haven't made great updates and put in great shit. I'm just saying it. Yeah, it's it's like it's, it a, it's like like the 
it like every it, they the whole purpose of marketing a game is not like the gigantic highs. Yes, those are good. Like the influx of money guarantees like the games of the future. But like for a game like Hell Divers, where like there is like some like long term monetization monetized the bit of it, you know. Ultimately, they've gotten to their end game. They've gotten yeah. to think like the player base is settled. The people that are going to be playing regularly and enjoy playing regularly are here to stay. Almost like Warframe. Think Warframe. Right. That's what Warframe is. like has like the people who come to it occasionally or like liked it like when it exploded because they wanted you know a better well, game than uh, fucking Destiny. <laughs> they wanted to play Destiny but like not Destiny. I um, I gotta ask, uh, with these games of uh, as a service things being brought up, how do you feel about the first Descendant and something become human? Too human? Uh, they're I both live I, action games. I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. So they're both free to play uh, games as a service video uh, games that were both released, I think, this week or the last two weeks. Something like that. Okay. Uh, they literally both came out. I heard that. <clears throat> uh, fuck. What the hell did I just say the name was? I had it in the The lost. Final Descent? The First Descendant? First Descent? I don't fucking know. Long story short, uh, they said that that was kind of more of a cash grab than more of your standard free to plays. Two Human has a lot of character customization. It's a little wonky though, so I would say give it a few like months, let it update that whole thing. But yeah, that just happened in the game sphere. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, my thing is, is that for all of for like the controversy that that were the result of Sony's choices with Hell Divers, ultimately Hell Divers has a pretty solid um, monetization path. Um, in regards yeah, to the people who will pay for the war bonds, the people who won't, long story short, everybody has settled in. It's every, yeah, now every, on its everybody gets tour. to have fun. Everybody can have fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and from what I, and from, it, correct me if I'm wrong, anybody in the comments, um, I'm pretty sure that every time they release a new war bond, like all the original, they get war something bond, for free. The original war bonds are still there, so it's like there's no FOMO. Oh, okay. That see, that's the thing that I fucking hate about even premium paid games that you will miss out on not necessarily content that will uh, impact the gameplay and put a competitive edge over non uh, paying characters, but uh, players. But um, it's just fucked up that I pay sixty, seventy, eighty, up to one hundred and ten dollars for a game, and then there's still content that I can miss out on that was there, and then they'll try selling it back to me. I mean, every fighting game has done this. Tekken Eight just opened up a uh, you know premium shop, so uh, that's I, just. I think battle passes are not a bad form of progression they are basically just another form of progression that you can see out on the line but the only but i i my issue with them is when is the fomo aspect i genuinely believe that if you're going to have a uh, battle pass of some of any sort um you should it do, should be indefinite it should be indefinite you it should you or like i think you should do kind of what halo does which is just you know you start in like the new hit like the, the the halo game that like fucking flopped um and if i and correct me if i'm wrong but this is my understanding of how it works is you have like the battle pass that came with the base game and then every subsequent battle pass is just added on to the end of it and so ad nauseum like in, in infinity whenever they create a new battle pass of your content it's thrown on to the end so like you know you can get it whenever you yeah, want it. and you know you can and i think i think that if you want as long as the battle pass doesn't have any like power in it basically like as long as like it's like all cosmetics or fun and fun i think that selling battle pass skips is completely viable so long as the battle pass content remains 
So just to make sure I'm understanding your point, you're saying that you should make the battle passes free after they've expired when the new one comes out, right? I and think then I think that the I think I think what <laughs> they what they should do is the battle pass itself should be mm -hmm. free. The battle pass okay. itself should be free. The co the new content is tacked on to the end of the battle pass and uh if you and this the, here's what this does this rewards your most active and player. Then this rewards just most, very quickly yeah. to let monetization in the form of tier that, skips for the battle pass understand correct. so with this so here's what this does this mm. makes it so um uh your the people who play the most and play most actively just get the shit i will say i, I not and that I, I don't understand the failure of this game but i think also that's what suicide squad is tr has tried to do don't get me wrong they didn't have the juice from the beginning the game yeah. just wasn't good but you know I, and, and the worst part is is, is that while that, that is idea a, is good <laughs> that it, it like eat like a good even a turd can have even a turd will have a couple pennies in it sometimes no literally you know so i like, would even propose uh, i would even say do do what i was saying right the new battle pass the one that gets updated every few months or whatever that one is premium but it becomes free whenever it expires and for the expired battle pass, you could buy the tier skips like you were saying. I fuck with that idea. That's cool too. You right, know? Because, because here's the thing. At the end of the day, if you shut this game off and turn it back on, 50 years from now, you could just play solo mode on, on over and over again when, with no players and still just grind out the fucking cosmetics you want anyways. Like, that's why like i understand the hate that it got when it initially dropped but i think looking back after mortal kombat 1 people were really looking at it with rose colored goggles on right now uh mortal kombat 11 really did that don't get me wrong there's online aspects where certain costumes you just can't get without fighting people online and i respect it because that's what a fighting game honestly should be you know like but go fight also, actual people Go fight actual people and get good. Raise the ranks and get it through, re uh, you know, tier yeah, rewards yeah, or whatever. Yeah, no, that, I think, that is, like, uh, there's a YouTuber that goes by the name of Ricky or Ricky Organate. Um, he, uh, mm. he has this entire video, um, uh, here, let me see if I can just briefly, uh, bring it up, because I, ref I, I forget the exact acronym but but like for me it's his uh he he basically talks about how games kind of need um three aspects to be uh good to be um not um not not good to be um uh like to, to be kind of successful and uh one of those was uh as he the, was was he calls big dick factor like you know, if it's like in the old Halo games, you would have like your skull helmet and stuff that you got from like winning, like from like winning and, ha and like and like being like good enough at the game. And it is one of those things where it's, uh, um, you know, y you learn, you or you're just like, oh, I'd fucked. Like, but but you only get that through like winning. Like, I do think that like. There need to be certain cosmetics. There need to be certain things that show, like, hey, I'm built different. Don't fuck with me. <laughs> yeah, like, that is, that is, you know, ultimately, I think, one of, like, the big things uh, that... I mean, uh, yeah. don't get me wrong. That was one of the biggest, uh, you know, uh, acclaims and... Uh, what do you want to call it? Attractions of the original Modern Warfare's. I mean, when you saw somebody with an intervention that had extended mags and a fall camo on the ground in Modern Warfare 2, you knew you were dealing with a fucking Lee Harvey Oswald motherfucker. Like, you weren't leaving, you weren't leaving the scene unscathed <laughs> yeah, like, type shit. So, well, yeah, no, I definitely different. agree.
Yeah, and I just, think like yeah, go for it. Sorry, didn't you? Games like Hell Divers, games like Warframe, especially whenever you go to the relays and shit like that, and you see the other characters, and you go on missions, and you see all the fucking cosmetic items and all the shit that's going on there. Like I understand you and I have a difference. <laughs> there has to be that type of factor into the games. I I think too many games are emphasizing the paid monetization of online aspects and battle passes that i mean like literally i think it was this week or last week um we just heard the real reason we never got the story dlc for gta 5 and it's because gta online just became the fucking cash cow and even though they recorded everything it didn't make sense to release it because it wasn't going to compete with gta online yeah. I think, in my opinion, they should have just fucking released it for free. They already have the goddamn thing, but let's not get into that. Yeah, I feel that. But uh, the CBT I was talking about from Bricky said it was, uh, yep. said it, it was um, uh, casual accessibility, easy to understand, easy to grind, good for noobs and vets, big dick factor, rewarding cosmetics, show off to other players, prove you main X. And uh, time investment unlocks for years, multiple avenues tailored to veterans. Which I think is a... I'm going to send you this video so you can watch it yourself. Um, yeah, please I, do. I, I think he genuinely, I think he genuinely uh, does a fairly decent job of, uh, explain, of explaining it better than I could here. But um, yeah, it's just... The whole battle pass thing is just... I, like, I, like I, I think my biggest... I don't necessarily have a problem with live service games and and might i even add like games that you pay up front for as long as they are games that are expect that like do have like live like like you know long-term support goals in mind um you know with more if, like if you have people actively on payroll developing content for a game you know what i think like if you pay the full price for a game and there's an aspect of the game that is, is popular that people enjoy i think having cosmetics and things available in that part of the game is justifiable in my opinion um i think that is a completely i think that's i think that's kind of understandable because you got to pay people's payroll you gotta you know it's, you know at a certain point it just becomes a, a sink and if it's not making that money the suits at the top are just going to kill him which you know was part of the which like let's be fucking for real like uh, for was a big reason why the, there was a call of duty every fucking year because like for because like up until a certain point they didn't have that stuff so they just made a new one and now and treyarch seems to be like the only consistent one that makes somewhat of what they used to make i'm not saying it's the same but it seems somewhat well i mean basically the way it works now is is that they have three three studios in rotation making call of duty games at a time they have treyarch they have sledgehammer infinity and infinity, and infinity war, war. But it's, the Infinity War, uh, not Modern Warfare 3, supposedly the multiplayer in that is, like, good, but it's literally a carbon copy of Modern Warfare 2, the original, not the last year version, or what the fuck ever, you know what I'm saying. Uh, so I'm like, why is it that only one out of these three studios continuously makes good content and the other two are hit or miss if they don't rely on original traits infinity ward seems to like be more consistent seems more consistently seems to do better content than sledgehammer they go for i won't lie like infinity war ward has a great uh power of using gimmicks like they definitely change it up don't get me wrong but never but in a I'll, way that like shakes the form yeah exactly like they'll give it a whole new retexturing but then it'll feel exactly like two years ago or three years ago game and it's like come on guys i thought this was gonna be bigger <laughs> you know who made vanguard call of duty vanguard that was a uh, sledgehammer yeah that yeah because here's the thing i don't judge call of duty by its multiplayer or even its single player campaign i judge it by its arcade mode. i judge call of duty games by their arcade mode yeah by their zombies mode spec ops extra mode whatever invasion whatever whatever the fuck you yeah. want to call it um 
I ultimately do feel that like the arcade modes are the most fun part about Call of Duty for me personally. I couldn't give I couldn't give less of a shit about the PvP. Uh, the story modes, the stories used to be like the the, the um, solo campaigns. Like I I I used to buy Call they of used Duty. They used to be fun. I used to buy Call of Duty for the solo campaigns, and I used to buy Call of mm -hmm. Duty for the zombies modes, and that was it. Yeah. Call of Duty, uh, not Call sure of Duty zombies were... was just couch co-op party game for for me. That was that's what it was after I finished the solo mode. Yeah, uh, I mean, between Black Ops 1, uh, all, all the Black Ops zombies are consistently good. Even if you don't like necessarily the changes they make, you re recognize I, that the I, gameplay say, is I'd good. I'd say 4 was probably my least favorite, like Call of Duty, uh, Black Ops 4. Like, the stuff, the mechanics there were probably my least favorite. Um, but it's like uh, the pizza analogy. Like, you could have bad pizza, but it's not the w worst food you could have. Right. right. Now, I I did see I never played Call of Duty Ghosts, so I never got to experience the. Uh, oh, not I, I that never, one I, was bad. I, I I I I hear that like people are looking back at it as just like, it, that like the actual like a lot of the gameplay mechanics and decisions that they did with it, including their art in the arcade mode that they had for it. From what I hear, was actually pretty verbose and and excellent in a lot of ways. Especially, I'm uh, going off uh, the single player because number one, it ends on a cliffhanger, and then they never announce the ghost two. That's the first thing, and then uh, what's it called? The multiplayer was like really a drag, but the arcade mode was pretty fun. I, will the arcade, I heard the arcade mode was good. I heard, I heard that the perk mode and system that they had in Ghost was actually really good too. Even if the, uh, I, I I I do wonder like at, outside looking in in hindsight how much of the hate towards Ghost was just a sort of community backlash to just kind of the monotony of, of Call of Duty at that point. Um, which, I mean, you know, Titanfall came out, I think, alongside Ghosts, too. So, you know, that kind of just... That, I, I remember that year. I literally got the special edition of fucking Call of Duty Ghosts, right? And then... After I played it, like I got the prestige edition with the fuck ever veteran, whatever it was. After I played it, I was like, this shit is trash. Get me Titanfall. Never mind. Fuck Call of Duty. <laughs> but yeah, I play Call uh, Titanfall out of spite. I heard it, was, it was good. I heard Titanfall 2 got an update recently, like a stability and, and security update recently. So, like, it's, it's still good. That single cool player is supposedly really good. Yeah. Um, at least Titanfall 2 single player is. But then again, like, Respawn actually fucking listened to people and stuff. And it bums me out that, like, Respawn is now just, like, Apex Legends generator dot, dot studio. So, I don't know. I, I feel like Respawn, if they, like, didn't have to, like, maintain and constantly keep content cranked out for apex i feel like the of the i feel like you they, they probably would do a titanfall 3 and honestly probably. i think if Re, i think if respawn did make titanfall 3 it would be like i don't i think that they because they have apex that they would just they, they're like we don't want another fucking live service here's our content roadmap for it and then after that we're just gonna have security patch and balance patches occasion like it just kind like of just like maintain it like at arm's length after a couple of years. Like, they have to be done with Titanfall 2. Titanfall 2, from what I hear, is still, like, remarkably playable. Yeah, yeah, it, it definitely is. It's mobile, uh, high mobility and shit like that. Like, it's really it's really seamless. I was also going to say, uh, I don't understand. I, I understand it, but I don't understand why this horror stories and the failures out of big companies trying to make live service games has not deterred big studios and big companies from trying to do live service games it is because the amount is because it is because ultimately um they the amount of money a live service game can generate is too enticing for them not to try and waste billions of dollars trying to get a successful one going now, no, I know. No, no, no. Granted, I think that if every company wants to have a live service game, have that live service game. But once you get a successful one that like that that like that has legs, don't make another. Yeah, 
because, go back to because, doing because, what you were doing. <laughs> right, because here's the thing. It's like, ultimately, everybody has, like, here's the thing that people forget. Everybody has, like, their main game, their main live service game, their main comfort game that they play, right? They're like, this is a live service game that has constant. Everybody has, like, one that they go back to and they enjoy. And it's very, very difficult to make a player go from one to the other or play both because they're so time consuming. Correct. So for me, um, I my, my issue is that I have a couple live service games that I genuinely enjoy playing and my time is split between them and therefore my invest emotional investment in them is split like i love elder scrolls online it was my first mmo like like the first mmo i actually enjoyed i have five thousand hours in that fucking game i don't uh, think i have five thousand hours in a single game right so so like i've I've played that game for well over six, seven years, like six years, and I've played a disgusting amount of it. And, but like, I also like Fallout 76. I also like No Man's Sky. These are like, while, and while No Man's Sky ostensibly is not necessarily a, like, if you bought it and downloaded it tomorrow without any, like, without like any Wi Fi or anything, like, you could, you'd be fine. You could still play it. Like, it's whatever. But like, they put out a fucking content update, a free content update for free every three months, like clockwork. So like, there's always a reason to jump back into the fucking game. Um, Fallout 76 released a new expansion, and I still haven't gotten into it to do it because I'm still have to go play the. Go I still have a bunch of content I have to do in the Elder Scrolls Online, and like, you know, you know. So it's like, you know, you know, for, for like. Ultimately, what point I was trying to make is that everybody has like their one live service. If you and there is room in the market for more live services, but but there isn't room in the market for every game to be a live service. If you it want just, to, if you want to do it, becomes too much. It does. Okay. Now, granted, like if you are in, once you have that live service it, under your company umbrella, foster it. You know, you need to do everything in your power to make people want to stay, to make people feel valued and enjoy it, you know. And then if you're going to have, like, games that have, like, a longer support cycle, like, you have, like, a Helldivers, for example. Helldivers mm -hmm. is not, I think, it, I don't think is enough, like, that is a game that isn't going to appeal to most people to be their one hyper-obsession. It is going to be for some. There were definitely people that were like that with the original Helldivers, but it's not going to be like that for everybody. So one of the things you kind of have to keep in mind is, is, okay, how do we get people like you, you need, you, you, then you need to like do something like be suggested, like where you like have your progression be like this battle pass thing. And then like you tack it on at the end, like, or you need to, you know, like you. you yeah, because I think this is also a lot of realities for gamers when there are so many options for so many different live service games so many different battle passes on these live service games <clears throat> what you already yeah. you already factor in work you already factor in sleep and then you already have the limited amount of time split of your free time split between uh you know spending time with family actually friends. playing video games friends the whole nine yards right yeah there's only, ben, eight, there's only eight hours in a day, and realistically, we only have eight of them to ourselves to do what we, it, to do what we want. Exactly. And if you work more, you have less. If you sleep more, you have less. If so you the have whole family, you have less. So the whole nine like, yards. You, you and I are both in committed relationships. Like, like oh, we don't have families, not right. yet. We not. <laughs> yeah, but like even so, even so having a relationship still eats you know three like like anywhere between from three to five hours of your day by itself if it's not 50 percent of your day in terms of your free time then it's probably you're either on different working schedules or it might not be the best <laughs> or, you, or like, either you're fucking judge. up or one of y'all are fucking up like, like, like yeah so so like ultimately like you know the big the big the big thing is is, is that like you know what I think also in this ecosystem, what ends up happening is, is, is that, you know, the word of mouth of, you know, journalists, like, cer like certain figures in the space and uh, your fellow gamers and friends that play games becomes more valuable because you can't trust, like, fuck shit, like PC Gamer, 
uh, or any of the like the typical games media, because it because ultimately you have to remember this in the gaming news press are like it it's the, it's akin to like industry press mm -hmm. like it's like it's like a fucking um it's like fucking like uh a restaurant it's like a fucking um uh a, 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 like a manufacturing like 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 uh, a press for like an industry type of thing like industry like industry news you know that's what I think... press, it's not for us like, yeah the, no, like I the, know. The, you know it's it, it's basically reporting on like what's going on in the industry type of thing it you know mm -hmm. you like that's what people have to remember pc gamer and things like that they are not in ign especially aren't you know reporting to us they are reporting to the competitors of other companies about what's going on in the industry they are they are yeah. their industry rags so you know for us like you know when when i get a critical mass of people in my life and that I play games saying hey you got to try this game i say okay I'm going to go try this game. And so what ends up happening is, is that you do have games like your Elden Rings. You do have your games like your Spider-Man. You do have your games like Baldur's Gate. Not to say that all three of those are necessarily on, on like the same playing field per se. I, you know, but just in terms of like scale, like, publicity, the games, whole nine yards. Good games that are well liked and that, that, that have a critical mass of people that say, Hey, you should try this. We, we're living in an environment now where, like, actually good games that aren't like will like are are suggested more than like the the slop that comes out. Like, if EA puts out like a, a new like, and I, just to lend credit to your point, I will also say I think a lot of the time video game purchases are done because of word of mouth more so than advertisement. It so. is. It is. The community is a like, community is I think one of them. like while well, yes games that spend you know a million dollars on marketing will usually make multiple millions more back in copy sales. Ultimately, you know, if you know there's like people would talk and and you know, I, I you know like I don't know anybody. I, the only person I know who played uh, Suicide Squad was my buddy sean and he streamed it for his channel as a joke oh, i'd like to talk about how bad it was <laughs> yeah so you there know? you go if that's the type of shit that you're seeing about a video game you're less likely to go experience it like i, I like, want... if, like if i wanted to experience it i'm just gonna go watch his vods no literally i also want to say um i have a slight disdain for mobile gamers in terms of not because they're not real gamers or what the fuck ever the mainstream argument is my whole thing is when video game companies uh started to monetize time i think that us as gamers really got fucked by that because as we're already stating Eight hours in a day shit is already fucking limited well the thing is is that when they implemented it like we push back. Don't get me wrong. But I understand the fucking. Just before we get into like the initial pushback and shit like that, I understand the appeal of stopping that upgrade from lasting ten hours as opposed to the seven. What the fuck ever, uh, you know. And I totally get how it's almost like gambling. I understand the uh, uh, you know shady aspects of it from the video game companies. I'm just like, fuck, man, we're in this situation now because of how profitable that shit has been for every fucking buddy. And uh, it's sad. Yeah, here's the biggest sadness, dude. So here's, so this is a pirate Yeah, software. here's the biggest. He's, love him. He's very entertaining. Good dude. Um, Great guy. I love his shorts. Absolute God. Yep. So we're going, so I'm, I'm just, this is relevant to what you just said. So I'm going to bring this up. Sadness, dude. I worked two years of overtime straight on StarCraft II, Wings of Liberty. StarCraft II, Wings of Liberty made less money than the horse, the first Sparkle Pony horse in World of Warcraft. A $15 microtransaction horse made more money than StarCraft II. That's it. That's the whole meme, dude. You're wondering why these companies do microtransactions? Because dipshits keep buying all of them. Yeah, here's the biggest... Yeah. 
And I don't have complete disdain for people who buy microtransactions and shit like that. Obviously, I do it as well. I'm not going to fucking sit here and yeah, well, criticize I, I people that do I play Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. I've bought a, probably at least $1,000 worth of gems. More but it's more just so play. fucked. Especially in games where you already pay these fucking premiums just to get access to the content. Then the shit gets pulled away from you artificially. Not because of any real timeline. It's digital content. How much fucking space does it take up on a server? <laughs> yeah, my, here's my thing, right? It's just ultimately, I think if I were to start like make a game tomorrow and I and I wanted it to be monetized in whatever way, I think that a lot of the ways that I would do it is I think I would, you know, I think, you know, at having, you know, like a progression line where with that's cosmetics only that you can um, buy. You know your way through there are there will be obviously a handful of cosmetics that are earn only you know get that you know big dick factor basically um and you know then and then like if i if, there, if i'm selling like cosmetics and shit you know it's there's no fucking fomo or, or rotation of them it's just they're just there yeah you know ultimately, yeah man I, I, that's part of the reason I think, like, ultimately, I, I stick with like more traditional, um, uh, you know, a live service in the form of like Elder Scrolls Online. Um, enough there, like, there is so many cool-looking armors and stuff just in the base game by itself, and you can mix styles and stuff together using the outfit system, so you get like a verbose like options and stuff, which is pretty cool. Ultimately, there's no need for me to like spend a lot of money on clothing or things like that. I have a fuck ton. Like, don't get me wrong, I have a fuck ton because, like, you know, I get that's I, playing the game. That's playing the game. Like, I also like have an Outer Scrolls Online subscription for the year, and like, which means every month I get, you know, fifteen, fifteen plus, fifteen, sixteen dollars worth of like the premium currency with my purchase of like ESO Plus, which is just. Honestly, like if you play Elder Scrolls Online, like, and you've played WoW in the past, just pay for ESO Plus. You, you, the craft bag is worth it. You get access to all the DLC, so you don't have to pay for it out of pocket. It's fine, um, and it's and you get and honestly, you get like fifteen bucks a month in the currency, anyways. So it's like, like you're getting like it's, it doesn't hurt. I know what you're it saying. It yeah. doesn't hurt. But, like, also the nice part about Elder Scrolls Online is it's an MMO that's pay once, play forever. Yeah, but here's also the thing, like, exactly like Omi was saying in the video. Uh, whatever bullshit content thing, uh, I don't fucking know, uh, a gun skin in Call of Duty will make more money than a Hades 2 will ever make. And it's just like, fuck, man, what do you do? What do you do? Thankfully, it's not a direct competition in the form of, like, they already have these studios inside of their, uh, the binary PlayStation Xbox studio fucking, you know, Venn diagram there. But, um, it is, it's fucked. It's fucked. Yeah, the only, the only thing is, the only thing I will say is, is that Supergiant is a team of, like, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24 people. 24, 25 people working in Supergiant Games. These are the people that made 80s. 1 and 2. And here's my thing, right? It's like, yes, I agree that, you know, like, like, ultimately, we're kind of in an indie renaissance at present. Without a doubt. Like, and that's why like, I say the, it's the, not a the, direct competition. Yeah, the best games are going to come from indie developers. Like, I think, like, games, like, priced around the $40 mark. Like, that, like, that is, like, your... 40 and like, below. The 40 and below. Like, you're, you're, you're like, you're between the... Paying, paying for a game that costs between 20 and $40 is usually how you, a price point where you're going to get a pretty solid gameplay experience. Like... Stardew Valley is twenty dollars. It's usually on sale for fifteen, ten, yeah, easily. You know, you know what else is forty dollars? Helldivers. 
PAL world. Both, you know, excellent double A games that are definitely worth your time and investment. And so but drastically like, different. Drastically <laughs> different. And it's like, and then like what and like what and like what came out in like the weeks after like PAL World and Helldivers 2? Skull and Bones. A yeah. game that costs at by default $70, I think. Yeah. 60 maybe on PC. Probably maybe. not. But and if you're buying the ultimate edition, fucking 110 bucks on this shit. And don't get me wrong. I'm not saying anything bad about $110 on certain edition of fucking games, especially on the shit that you get. But I am like, how much more grind? Here's my thing. I shouldn't feel like I'm clocking in at work if I'm playing your game. If that's the case, then your game is dead to me. Yep. So if I look at the standard edition of the game, it is $60. But they have it heavily discounted to thirty, because it's done poorly, poorly. And mind you, remember this also. I know they dropped the price, but on the ultimate edition or premium edition, whatever it was, you also got three days of early access. That isn't there anymore. If they go to a certain price it's wrong you know you're losing out on content that was sold to you yeah here's my thing right it's like i paid for the deluxe edition of starfield to be able to play it early that that is an aspect of the reason why people will pay for something you get to experience the thing earlier which is like ultimately that just means that the release date is like i just the, 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 yeah. It the, means the release date is three days, five days earlier than it actually is, and it just fucks over the people that buy the base game. I totally agree. Here's what I think, right? Like, the deluxe edition of Skull and Bones is a standard deluxe and premium. Standard is 60 normally, deluxe is 75, premium is 90. Right? For the, we're in the age where the standard edition is not the base experience of the game. You want to pay for at least the deluxe edition. Like, the at least the mid-range one. Now, for the truly scummy companies like EA, if you want the real experience playing the game, you gotta get the premium edition. Yeah. It, it, and it's, it honestly depends on the type of game that you're talking about. Because as well, like... I'll even say this, right? I'm going to buy Sparkling Zero $110 whenever I have it, right? No right. fucking question. Same thing with Space Marine 2. The thing about it, I won't sit here and lie, is if you don't pre-order the game, you don't get some of the characters that would be considered, like, main canon. And maybe you get them through story progression or what the fuck ever, but, like that does kind of fuck over some of the fan base that might not have the money until their game releases or after. So I'm definitely not turning a blind eye to shit. But I will also say Ubisoft games tend to be, if you buy the like premium edition, the most expensive, it's pretty much just finishing the game faster. That's what it really is. Which it's is like, at that point, you're just spending money to have less fun. And I mean, our man, uh, Pirate, that's his name, right? Pirate? Pirate something? Whatever. Uh, he said that in a different short. We're like, you're actually paying to lose because you're missing out on more of the game. The challenge is a part of the game, and if you pay to overcome that challenge, you're paying to lose out on some of that experience, some of that grind. You know? Right, and it's like, also, like, when the grind is so impossible that you know, you have to, like, there's, like, I was, and I talked about this in my Shadow Deer retreat, right? Like, like, you should spend about an hour and a half, two hours max on a boss in Elden. If, because, like, it should take you about, the, if, you, if you've been playing, the, if you played through a bunch of Elden Ring, and you played FromSoft games before, 
and like in like and you understand that okay i've got to learn how to dodge all this do this don't do this and you like that process of learning takes time and however long it should be now that however long that time learning of the curve should be now here's the thing right at a certain point if i'm spending i spent 50 i spent eight i spent no 10 hours total fighting the final boss of the elden ring dlc At the six hour mark, I realized the build I had, which had gotten me through every other fight in every other aspect of the game, was not cutting it. I had to switch. Now, granted, that is an indicative of poor, of poor gameplay design where I like have been able to go through the game and play with this build and like adapt and stuff to be fine. Now I have to change all of my gear, change all of my strats and everything to, to do it. Like, that doesn't feel good. That's indicative of like. You know, I would say that the final boss of El the Elden Ring DLC is poorly designed in, in, in that way because it's punishing in ways that are not good. If you want to go check that out, go check out the um, Shadow of the Earth Tree review on my channel. It was published this past Thursday at time of when, when you see this at on day of release. Um, sure. But the reason I say all that is when you're spending, like there's a, there is a critical amount of time that a task in a game should take for you to be able to move on. Right. One of the this is one of the issues. Or for you, real quick, or for you to recognize that your round uh, hole, uh, square peg, round holeing it. You know. Right. <laughs> you know, there's a, another example of this. Is this Pal World? Right. In Pal World, you know, you start by like really fast progression. Like you're like you're like okay, I'm leveling up. I'm at unlocking new things. I'm doing this, 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 this. And then once you hit like you know the mid thirties, high thirties shit starts to like like shit starts like slowing down like once you hit thir level 30 things should start slowing down a little bit more once you hit like 35 the higher 30s it starts slowing down even more and once you hit like like the 40s you know progression starts like slowing to more to a crawl because like you know the gameplay loop is you is is collecting resources going around collecting resources crafting resources so you can then expend those resources when you go out exploring more of the map it is a it's it's a, it's a game of prep and automa automating that prep to like be quicker so you can get out and explore more it is a if you if you like shit like minecraft factorio like the kind of like those things it, it feels good to do but you know at a certain point like i'm spending you know an hour hour and a half getting everything together and crafted and then i'm spending about 20 30 minutes you know doing this you know that can be frustrating which is part of the reason they made certain they made it they, in frequent pa in, in patches updating the game they've changed that uh they've changed that to not be the case they've changed that the game to um they've changed the game like they've added aspects of the game to make that grind easier so you can get out and explore more you know and you know for games like, you know, say like an Assassin's Creed Odyssey, that's a good example. Metal loves it, and it's not a bad game by any means. But like, once you get to the higher levels, like, you gotta spend money. Like, if you unless you want to like spend hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours, and hours grinding. And um, I already knew this was gonna be the case. That like that's what was gonna end up happening. So I like our I back when I started playing, I earmarked like two hundred bucks for her to just buy the shit she needed to get ready to go. And yeah, I mean, I will say that is one of the benefits of these games becoming going on discount, going on sale, becoming less expensive. The DLC of these games, you know, sometimes ranging from like two hundred full bucks to get everything, depending on the amount of DLC, to like. 85 75 50 dollars depending on the discount or whatever i will say that's a big you know benefit for us especially since everything is so cross-platform you could buy shit everywhere you'll get a discount anywhere the whole nine yards uh i will just say it feels so fucked that after that the same experience you were talking about with Elder Scrolls that I'm talking about with Warframe that you're talking about with Fallout 76 these live service games that actually respect your time respect the grind that you're going on um 
it never makes you feel like, okay, now I have to shell out 20, 30 bucks for me to actually make progress. Because if I don't, the next four or five days of my life, whenever I play this game, is only going to be dedicated to this task. And if it's something like a FromSoft game where you're aware of that aspect because that's the that's the appeal then yeah of course i respect it because you're up front there's no like could you imagine if sekiro had like a gun dlc where everything was just a single bullet you know how mad people would be like that's the shit that i'm talking about it just feels so fucked <laughs> yeah. um you want to move on you want to do one more story before we call it yeah sure do you know about the hook too girl yes yes i do such a fucking boomer conservative me, dude. I I could not be more indifferent on this subject. I people I'm not were, gonna people, lie though. Uh, the, the, uh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Just very quickly, I found it funny. Noelia had such a visceral reaction to her being brought up, and I'm like, I understand it, but also I'm not gonna go out of my way to give this person any real estate in my mind. <laughs> Here's the thing. I saw. I only know her for like just like like her memes and shit were on my for you page, and then like I just, I didn't engage with it much at all. So like she disappeared for a time, and like she went. She's done some podcasts. Apparently, like a family friend of hers, a family friend of hers, like basically like her like her dad's best friend or some shit, like uh started uh selling hats and shit, like and giving her the proceeds so she'd at least get some benefit out of it, which is good. Um, she went on a podcast and said, yeah, I, I'll fuck, I, yeah, I, I'll, I ain't fucking voting for Trump, it's fucking great. And, like, people were really upset about that, because, like I said, it's a boomer conservative meme. And the whole purpose of the Hulk 2 girl was so men who, like, mediocre men who are, like, shitty partners and don't know how to eat pussy, uh, send it to their wives and girlfriends saying, huh? Huh? Literally. You know, because it's like, it's, it's, here's the thing, you know who the Hulk, what the Hulk 2, 2, like, meme is, like, popular with? People that Rub. don't, people that don't have like, like a healthy sex life. Yeah, probably. Like it, it I is, don't it, see. It's 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 with people with partners who either, either don't have the experience, like don't have experience, like 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 don't have experiences. It's like it's like, they're like like, Conolingus and Fellatio is not present in conservative relationships by and large. You know, probably like, not. You know what I mean, like. You know, not a, you know, Lauren Bulber doing some wild shit with her partners and stuff, like giving them handies in theaters and stuff like that is like, that's as like, far as they go. Like that, like that's that, their kink. Like, like that's <laughs> like, 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 like. There's some exceptions to that. Some of them might swing a little bit, whatever. But like by and large, most most of the people that subscribe to like a moderate conservative conservative lifestyle that are the types of people that do have the Hulk two girl present in their existence. These people aren't eating. They aren't eating. Aren't, aren't eating their their partner's genitalia. Like they're not doing that shit. Yeah, which, but which is, I I will also say the reaction either way of her gaining fame, either from conservative people, non-conservative, whatever the case may be, her gaining followers and her receiving hate based on it and everything else in this world. I, I haven't seen Sometimes, her getting much hate, honestly. Uh, just outside like of like the like, abs, outside of the insane puritanical people, but then again, they hate everything. Not even that. The they, people were just like, hey, "Hey, we don't have to follow her and things like that." It just makes me wish that these presidents and world leaders would finally press the red button. Do it! Come on! Come on! Do it! I'm just, uh, I'm over it all. Uh, yeah, as am I. On that note, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for listening to the rundown. We appreciate you, your time, and your listenership. We're here with another very large episode compared to what we normally do, but that's good. Uh, next week, we're going to hypothetically, depending if we can get everybody, I want to have a um, conversation. Uh, we're going to have like some more other creators and panelists next week. Hopefully, fingers crossed, it might fall through. Uh, we've had one RSVP, the other one is still 50-50, so we'll see if we want to push it back further, but it depends. Regardless, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for listening. This has been the rundown. We can go follow, if you want to follow Brian, you can do so at youtube.com slash no to uh, Brian. 
you can find him on Instagram at no.2 underscore Brian. And, uh, yeah. Um, Brian, hey guys. there's some shit, I guess. Look at me before we before we quit. Look at me. I got the uh, episode two hair from Obi Wan. Look. Nah, he's got, nah, he's got that Qui Gon Jinn drip. Like the fucking uh, what's his name? Uh, yeah, no, it's Qui Gon Jinn. Who? Who are we talking about? He's ma- Obi Wan's master. Uh, Qui Gon. Yeah. Did I say it right, Qui Gon Jinn? Yeah, that's right. Uh, all right, go away.